From Krimo Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The University of the Witwatersrand, in partnership with diversified mining company Anglo-American, have relaunched the old Johannesburg Planetarium as the WIT's Anglo-American Digital Dome after major refurbishments. WITS has noted that the new Digital Dome is the largest of its kind in the Southern Hemisphere, made possible through an investment of 90 million rand from Anglo-American and WITS. Sabrina Jardim tells us more. Reflecting on the importance of public-private partnerships, the WITS Anglo-American Digital Dome offers a 360-degree immersive experience for visitors of all ages. It will also serve as a modern teaching venue and a collaborative research space where scientists and students can visualize their work, be it in big data, astrophysics, the digital arts, artificial medicine, microbiology or precision medicine. So this is indeed an inspiring venue. We have transformed the 64-year-old uh, Johannesburg Planetarium into this 360-degree uh, high-tech immersive auditorium, as you can see. So in this digital dome, what you will be able to see is uh, not just astronomy shows, but a variety of shows, anything from like scientific documentaries to 360 degree animated shows for children uh, so that you can have a coverage for all the, all the age group. The original Zeiss projector has been replaced with 10 new digital projectors to render an 8K full dome resolution. Each projector has its own image generator, which is controlled by a master computer. The sound in the digital dome has also been upgraded to an 8.2 audio system. Witz has noted that the refurbished facility includes the new digital projection, sound systems and auditorium seating with the possible future creation of a science and technology exploratorium. A new north wing expansion houses operational offices, exhibition areas and specialized spaces for digital dome show planning and design. The WITS Anglo-American Digital Dome will enter a pilot phase from November to the end of January 2025 and is expected to open its doors to the broader public in February of 2025. The first shows to be viewed in the Digital Dome include a set of six full dome shows donated by the American Museum of National History. A lot of effort has gone into, into this um, and the, the big thing here is to actually get people to experience things in a different level, right? Um, we will be running shows, right, from February uh, to the general public and to schools, and um, it will bring totally that experience to a new audience than just annual analog that we used to have. WITS and Anglo-American will make funds available to provide access to learners from selected quintile one to three schools to attend shows at no cost at the WITS Anglo-American Digital Dome during 2025. Phase three of the project entails building a wing which will house studios and look towards developing content locally in conjunction with the WITS School of Arts, Digital Arts, the Tsimolochong Digital Innovation Precinct and other partners. It will also link to WITS's new AI Institute that was launched on November 19th in the Digital Dome, said WITS. Speaking at a media premiere in November, WITS Vice-Chancellor and Principal Professor Zeblon Vilakazi described the planetarium as a multidisciplinary space that integrates elements from areas such as the humanities, arts, science, technology and mathematics. The first phase of the project is done um, in terms of completing the dome, repurposing the dome from the planetarium to what it is now, this Anglo-American dome. So that's just largely for teaching and learning, visualization, immersive way of learning and of course entertainment. It will also be very important when it comes to our teaching that in the era of AI how do you make teaching more fun for the want of a better word uh, make teaching much more visual right? be it in um, imagining how the human heart pumps showing all the blood vessels in the heart and the ventricles in the heart and the chambers of the heart how it pumps and moves in a visual way so that you actually by visualizing that you have a much deeper understanding of the mechanics of how the heart works. That's an illustrative example. Uh, for those that are in science and astronomy, they can actually take a journey onto the lunar surface, right? And look at all the craters, because all that information is there. But now it has been project, it can be projected, and you can find yourself in a space station, right? Uh, International Space Station, looking at the Earth, as if you are inside the space station and you're looking at the Earth. So that's the kind of what you call deep immersive way of learning. Um, for the students who are doing gaming, for example, a gamer can now, uh, as they produce the content, project it on the dome. 
and then get this kind of like 3D, uh, 360 visualization of their creative work. Food processing and packaging company Tetra Pak Southern Africa is ramping up its recycling efforts. Darren Parker tells us more. Tetra Pak South Africa is on track to achieve a 40% nationwide recycling rate for its liquid board packaging or LBP products by 2030. As the only principal LBP producer in South Africa, Tetra Pak has been ramping up its investments in LBP recycling through strategic partnerships with recyclers such as Gayatri Paper Mill and Impact Recycling Paper Mill. The company has also established relationships with organizations such as producer responsibility organization Petco and recycled products producer Infinity Industry. So we understood that at Tetra Pak, one of the core pillars of our sustainability agenda is increasing the recycling rate of our packaging. And in South Africa, we realized that we needed to ramp up efforts to, to increase the recycling rate. And one of the measures we put in is that we started working with the entire value chain from the bottom up. We started working with waste pickers, we started working with buyback centers, we started working with waste management companies like Impact, and then we worked with paper mills like Gayatri to further develop um, the, the processing of this material to an extent that today you can see Gayatri is not only extracting paper out of the cartons, they are also further processing the poly L component of the cartons to produce other high value products. By 2022, the recycling rate of our packaging was 4%. Last year, we managed to achieve an 8% recycling rate, but then we realized that we needed to do more. And as of 2024, as we currently speak right now, we are sitting on higher than 20% of our packaging that has been placed on the market. It's a significant jump from last year. Our ambition by 2030 is to reach 40% recycling rate in the market. And currently as it is, we're sitting at above 20%. It looks like we might reach it earlier, but then we might also revise our goals uh, in future and try and push for a higher target. But so far we look quite good on track to achieve our 2030 ambition of 40% recycling rate. Monaco attributed the growth in LBP recycling to focused investments made by Tetra Pak into the collection and processing aspects of the domestic recycling industry. So for us to get a big shift in, in our recycling volumes, firstly we, we, we took a study with the CSIR to understand what is it that the village chain requires. And once we had that information, we then started by working with Petco, which is a, a PRO that has predominantly been working with PET. They then managed to work with us to manage our, our EPR scheme for liquid board packaging. And in doing so, it enabled us to start having a wider reach to buyback centers. But we realized that we needed to drive this more. We could not uh, rely on the traditional way of increasing our recycling volumes. We then deployed 11 young graduates in the in nine provinces of South Africa. They manage buyback centers, landfills, municipality relationships on a key account basis, whereby every day they are working with these groups of people from waste pickers to drive collections. We then also realized that there was not a proper monitoring and management system of value chains in South Africa. We then introduced a system called MAPA SA, which helps us to monitor the trends, the challenges, and the successes throughout the country using our graduates that are in the, in, the, in the market. And that allows us to be able to tactfully target each and every area and resolve the challenges that we find in those areas in a, more, um, in a, more, in, in a much more scientific uh, method, so to speak. Yeah, yeah so for us to, to be able to increase recycling rates, we understood that capacity was out of of utmost importance. And we started investing in the sector in the early 2000s, whereby together with Gayatri we did a co-investment for the pulping side. We then also went on to put in a poly-L dry cleaning and processing plant, an extrusion plant, so that they could take the poly-L and produce pellets that could go into the plastic industry. But as we started realizing that we are growing the rates of recycling of cartons, we then further invested again this year into the plant to upgrade it so that it can process now 320 tons of poly L. And remember, poly L is 30% of our carton. So for every 300 ton of poly L that we produce, we would have done 1,000 tons of um, cartons. 
So our investments are continuing together with other companies like Inv Infinite Industries. We're investing in a dry cleaning line that will also be installed with them, which will help them increase their capacity. We have also invested in another company called Regenerated Polymers. They are the first in the country to produce a modular pellet that uh, contains 40% polyl. There are other investments that have also been approved and are earmarked for the future, and we will communicate about those in due course. So on the collection side of things, as I said, we, we understood that there was a need to work with uh, waste pickers. So firstly, we subsidized the price of uh, liquid board packaging that is being collected. Secondly, we also support some other buy buyback centers in terms of equipment that they need to streamline their operations or make it easier. This can be forklifts, can be balers, can be generators where there's no electricity. But we also have people on the ground that are working with these buyback centers on a daily basis. Where we see the need for us to intervene and assist, we go there and assist. Tetra Pak has also spearheaded various awareness campaigns to boost the recycling rate. Following the pilot of its educational recycle carton competition in the Eastern Cape last year, the company collaborated with a broader manufacturer base this year, including Orange Grove, RFG Foods and Woodlands Dairy, to increase recycling awareness in schools. The 2024 Recycle Carton campaign aimed to encourage learners to take on the responsibility of recycling. It started in September and ran in more than 320 schools across Gauteng, KwaZulu-Natal, the Eastern Cape and the Western Cape until the end of November. Tetra Pak expects that this initiative will have reached 300,000 learners by its conclusion. That's Kruma Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.